discussion because it's not my lesson. it's not my lesson at all. Um, I just ask, I just I just ask the Lord to use me to speak through me, and I know you'll be blessed by it. Amen. Let's start by a opening up with prayer. Let's bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father. I come before you, Lord, looking up to you, Lord, to ask you, Lord, to lead, guide, and direct me through your lesson, Lord, for what you have given me to speak before your people, Heavenly Father. I'm asking Heavenly Father just to use me, Lord, for your will, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. Take over my tongue, my thoughts, my words, my everything, Heavenly Father. I ask you, Lord, to anoint me from the crown of my head to the soles of your feet, of my feet, Heavenly Father. I ask you, let you Lord, ask you, Lord, let your the word that is spoken through me be touched. Your people, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you go before me and direct my path, Heavenly Father. I ask you, Lord, to touch everyone in the sanctuary on Zoom, Lord. Everyone, our visitors, Lord, touch them each, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint them all in your blood, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you, Heavenly Father, Jesus, have your will. Have your way, Lord. Let your will be done in your lesson, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I hope Everyone is doing well this Sunday morning. I heard you guys had a nice time yesterday at our Sunday church barbecue. Sorry I was not able to make it, but God is good. I'm glad you guys had a wonderful time. It was a glorious day as well, yesterday as well. So I am going to take a page out of Pastor Harris' book, and I'm going to open up with a song. And Pastor Harris, you can play that song right now, please. Praise God. God is good. I was... There we go. Come on. For grace. Everybody got to declare it. Everybody get on your feet. Say, this is my seat. Yes. To me what I have so. <laughs> Let me testify just a minute. See, I have perfect no. but I show been faithful God's got a purpose hey. and I know he's evil I've got a seed in the ground that is blessing no more stressing I've got a seed in the ground and it's growing now it's showing this is my season. Come on, church. For grace, for favor. Yes, it is. This is my season. Give me something that's like right here. Give me something that's like right here. Come on, sing it again, church. Say, this is my season. For grace, for favor. Yes, it is. This is my seed. Everybody declare to me what I have so. Listen, I want you to say, everything is working together for my good. Yeah, everything is working together yeah, for my good. You declare and say, everything is working
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to claim that for ourselves. Amen. So, repeat. This is my season for grace. Amen. This is my season for grace and favor. And favor. Yes. Amen. We claiming that, amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's like that song. God is good. Well, I'm gonna begin my lesson. <laughs> I just wanted to play that song. That was a nice song. Actually, my uh husband sent that song to me. I was like, oh, that's nice. I like it. And so I'm like, I I like I think I'm gonna just take a page for Pastor Harris book and open up with that beautiful song. So <laughs> praise God. So Today, my, my, as everyone knows, my book is the book of Galatians. And let me back up. So the title of my, my uh, lesson today is Free in Jesus. Amen. In the book, as I said, I'm coming out of Galatians chapter 5. And we'll be going through verses 1 through 15. Amen. Let's start with chapter 1. Of, um, I mean, chapter five, verse one of Galatians. Say amen, we have it. Amen. 
Oops, I can hear you guys. <laughs> Ma'am. All right. I did hear you guys. Praise God. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me get my thoughts right. <laughs> you know what I'm going to begin with? With reading through all the verses. Then we go back. Okay. Let's start. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free. Let me sign, excuse me. Let's start again. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit, profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Verse four, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Verse five, for we through the spirit, wait, I'm sorry, read through the spirit, excuse me, for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith with me, which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? The persuasions cometh not of him that calleth you, a little even, a little leaven of the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you, you, you shall bear his judgment. Whosoever he be, Verse 11, and I, brethren, if I yet preach this circumcision, why do I yet suffer, suffer persecution? Then, then in this, wait, excuse me, then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, I would they wear, wait, excuse me, I would they wear even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the, to the, to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt shall love what thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if thy bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consume one another. Amen. So that was verses one through five, one through 15, excuse me. Let's go back to, look like, so let's go back to verse one and read that one more time. So stand fast. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. Excuse me, yes. First one, again, it says, stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. All right. So this, this verse is a final appeal to walk in freedom, in the freedom of Jesus. All right. In the previous chapters, Paul has been teaching the Galatians to walk in the truth and the freedom of Jesus. In chapter one, he speaks, he speaks um, about the authenticity of the gospel. Paul defends his apostleship and the authority of the gospel. Then in chapter two, because all along he's trying to get the Galatians to see this. 
so in chapter two, Paul is accepted by the apostles. Paul defends his authority by telling telling them about the about his credentials. Uh, that the message he speaks is directly from Christ our Lord. So he's laying this all before them so they can see. And Paul confronts, also, also Paul confronts their blurred vision of Jesus and his work for them. And then in chapter four, um, he speaks about the children of God. He uses the illustration of slavery just to, uh, to show that before Christ came and died for our sins, people were in bondage to the law, thinking they could be saved by it. And this, we all know, is not true. They became enslaved by trying and failing to keep, to keep the law. We as Christians who believe in the word of God and obey it, we are the children, we are God's children, and we are free in the, we are free from bondage. We're not bound up. We are free in Jesus it's to give him praise, to worship him, to live, to live righteous. Living righteous is living free. Amen. Okay. Let's take a closer look at verse one. It says, stand fast, right? Therefore, in liberty with Christ, and wherewith Christ hath made us free and not entangled again. So it's, it's in stance. We're going to take a little bit closer look to that. So Jesus has made us free, correct? Mm -hmm. Amen. We, um, if we live in bondage to a legal relationship with God, it isn't because God is desired for us to live that way. He doesn't want us to live in bondage. God pleads with us to walk, to, uh, to plead with us to take his strength, to walk in freedom. He wants us to be free and to not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. See, Galatians have been taught this by Paul about the freedom in Jesus and not to be bound by the works of the law. But somehow the Galatians have allowed themselves to be distracted. And, it, and, and um, Chris, some Christians, I'm not saying all, can be, can be guilty of this, be distracted. Amen. And, and be, uh, be, I guess be knocked off, off the path of what we have already been taught of what the Galatians have been taught by Paul, but what we need to do is stand fast in what we've been taught and in the word of the Lord and in the freedom that he has blessed us with. Amen. Let's look at made us free. Still, still in the same verse. We don't make ourselves free. Freedom is a gift from Jesus. Given to us, and we receive it by faith. When we struggle to free ourselves, which we can't do, we just become more entangled, entangled with again with the yoke of bondage. We can't do this ourselves at all. We need Jesus. Amen. Let's look at stand fast of this part of the still in the first verse, which means that it takes effort to stay in a place of freedom. Someone who is made free in Jesus can still be in bondage. They can be deceived into placing themselves back into slavery, which was exactly what the Galatians were doing. They were doing, uh, they were doing this by listening to the uh, Judah, 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 I cannot pronounce that. I don't know why. <laughs> Judaizers, but I hope you guys get what I'm saying. I know the word, but it won't roll off my tongue like it should. Excuse me. Believing they can pursue God through their works, through good works. 
this is not true. In Hebrews 11, um, uh, you can turn there if you want, is Hebrews 11, verse 6. And it says, but without faith, this is uh, Hebrews 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? Diligently seek him. Amen. Let's go down to um, verse two through four. And it reads, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye, if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Excuse me, for, the, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is in debt, debt to the whole law. Christ, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever you, you Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. So trying to be saved, trying to be saved by keeping the law and being saved by grace are two different approaches. Amen. Just look at Christ will prop me. Yeah, Christ will prop you nothing. Christ's provision for our, save, our salvation will not help us if we are trying to save ourselves. Obey and uh, save ourselves, obeying the law does not make it any easier for God to save us. Amen. We need to accept his grace through faith, is what our faith that pleases the Lord. Amen. Let's look at another part of the verse. It says, falling from grace. When the law is embraced as a rule of walking with God, that means you're falling, your, your, faith, your faith is in the law and it's not in Jesus, it's not in him at all. And now you are separated from, G, from him and his saving grace and that's not good. That's not a place I know I know you don't want to be in, and I certainly don't want to be in. Amen. This is a path. So this is a this is the way Galatians is trying to turn. This is the path they were trying to go down. They was being deceived by these false teachings. Let's get down to um, let's read five and six, verse five and six. For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So for we through the spirit wait for hope, right? Of righteousness by faith. They are, they are not trying to earn it by performing good works. Not trying to do that. Let's look at a part of it. Uh, part of the verse says, in, "For in Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but by faith that worketh by love." So, so those who are walking in the Spirit know that being circumcision, circumcised, or uncircumcised means nothing, right? What matters is faith with through love, having faith is showing love and trust in the Lord. And that's where we want to be. Trying to serve or please the Lord by putting on, by putting your faith in the law rather than putting your faith in Jesus is not the path you want to go down. Our faith is in Jesus. Amen. And we are free in Jesus. Let's read 7 through 12. 
ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you, a little leaven, a little leaven, the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. Be he, I don't know why I do this, I just try to read without these glasses. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Will be none otherwise minded, but he that is troubled, but he that troubled you shall bear his judgment, bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Okay, verse 12. And I me, mean, excuse me. And I, brethren, if I yet preach the circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then and then is the Offense of the cross ceased. I would, I they, excuse me, I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. Trouble you. Amen. So let's look at you ran well. Amen. Paul remembered their good start, speaking about the Galatians. Their good, far, good, good, good start in faith. But he also knows that it isn't enough to start well. Amen. They were, uh, they were still in danger of falling in grace. Our faith should, should run deep. We shouldn't be able to be shaken by any false teaching that come our way. It's also important to know the word for yourself. Amen. The Galatians were turning away what they have been taught, the true word of God. Their, fa their face was shaken. And that's not good. That's not a place you want to be. Amen. Let's go down to verse, uh, it is, uh, read verses 13 to 15. Um, try to get my placing right. Starting with verse um, 13. For brethren, ye have been, been called unto liberty, only to use liberty for, excuse me. Can we start it again, please? For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another for all the law for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consume one another one of another so let's look at first 13. For the brethren, you have been called into liberty only to the not. I'm just going to read it one more time. Okay. Brethren, you have been called unto liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but love serve one another. Paul is distinguishing between freedom of sin and freedom to serve. Freedom to sin is no, there's no freedom at all. It isn't. Because it's it ties you to Satan and to others or to your own evil desires. The word flesh in this verse is not talking about the body, but to the sinful nature that attempts to use our bodies to lead us to sin. People who are, who are slaves to sin are not free at all. They bound up, amen? They are not free to live a righteous life. Christians are free to, 
do right and glorify God. We are free. Amen. And I think at the beginning I said verses 1 through 15, I should have said 1 through 18. So we're going to skip, go down to um, 16 through 18. Uh, let's start with 16. This I say, wait, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to another, to the other, so that ye cannot so that ye cannot do the things that ye, ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So let's look at in the spirit. We can tell if someone walks in the spirit because you will see the light of Jesus in them. It'll be flowing through. It'll have a glow about them. They'll look different, a good different, of course. Amen. So you 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 can tell. Uh, you can tell if someone's walking, someone walks in a spirit because of the way they look. They got a certain look about them. They're set apart. Okay. Jesus, I mean, when someone walks in the spirit, they listen to what the Holy Spirit says as he guides them down the path of righteousness, as he guides them down the path of righteousness. You can tell that walk. You can tell, even when I, I experience myself, when I walk into a room and at work and People are, are kind of loose lips and they did kind of just talk and they look like, oh, excuse me, Valerie. And I, cause I think, I know they see the, the, the light in me, they see Jesus in me. So they have respect enough to say, oh, excuse me. They know when you walk in the room, you're different. You're set apart, you know, amen. And that's a blessing to be there. And I'm closing, but I wanna close with some questions to us, not just to, I'm not gonna point the finger at you, to us. So these are the questions I want to um, end with. Uh, excuse me, one second. Let me back up. I'm sorry. I'm making all these mistakes. Forgive me. I'm going to back up. So life by the spirit is not legalism. It is life of faith, love that is Love, that is above all these false ways. Now I'm gonna ask the questions. I skipped a sentence, so. Now I'm gonna ask the questions and I'm gonna ask these questions to all of us. How is your faith? Does your faith roots run deep in Jesus? Are you easily shaken? Is our faith roots, roots planet in shallow ground where it can be easily plucked up? And those are the questions that I'm gonna leave you with today. And I'm hoping you this blessed by the lesson the Lord has given me to present to you. And that's my lesson, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Valerie. Such a powerful, powerful word this morning.